So probably about three years ago, I moved to Kenora from Southern Manitoba. Within the first couple weeks of moving here, I hit it off with my next door neighbor, Scott Green. And I realized how involved he was with this area and how passionate he was about the outdoors. So I'm Scott Green, I'm 40 now. Green Adventures' uh, mission statement would be trying to get everybody into the outdoors of all abilities to explore Northwestern Ontario. I just want to share what this area has. Running Green Adventures it's, and, and it being in Kenora, everything seems to be on Lake of the Woods. Like Lake of the Woods is a beautiful, big lake. For me, I've always kind of wanted to do in the canoeing and the kayaking is get off where you don't see too many motorized boats. I love Lake of the Woods, don't get me wrong, but there is just so much more to this area than Lake of the Woods and so many backcountry gems that I love exploring. And as soon as I moved to Kenora, I kept hearing about Isinglass Lake and the crystal clear waters, how it's the clearest lake around. Talking to Scotty, I said, let's go scuba dive Isinglass. And he told me we could do it, but logistically, it would be a lot more manageable if we were able to get this, this special permit that would allow us to travel this road that was normally restricted access. So Scotty was able to talk to the right people and tell them the scope of our trip. And we were granted this, this one time, very special permit to travel down Cameron Lake Road. I've always run trips into Isinglass coming through uh... Whitefish. You can go through Dogpaw and then Caviar, then it's about a kilometer portage. Lots of people do it. It's getting really popular, but it's a beautiful canoe trip. I've done that with kayaks and canoes and gone into here, and it's just a really special spot. I think anyone that's been into Isinglass, it's one of your favorite lakes. So going down the road, we go past Two Narrows, we go down the Cameron Lake Road, and that Cameron Lake is for a mine and for forestry, and you need a permit to go down there for resource reasons. So, primarily mining or forestry. Um, so, we pitched it to them that. Uh, that tourism is a major resource and they agreed with us. It's definitely growing, so they gave it to us. Uh, this road now allows us to drive right to Isinglass. Changes everything. We can bring a lot more gear. We can go in the fall, we can scuba dive, bring all that gear. Uh, so it's pretty exciting to be able to kind of car camp it. Like at the end of the day, it's cool that we have a camera, but this is the stuff that I'd want to be doing if it wasn't, you know, and I think you're going to have a blast. And I don't want to oversell the lake, but it's never really been uh, oversold. Everyone that sees it, it, it sticks with them. So I think it'll be pretty cool to, to experience that. We are leaving Kenora, headed to Isinglass. What time is it, Sam? No, it's Chip truck time. <laughs> that was good. I was hoping you'd say that. One of the prime eateries in Kenora is ye old chip truck. World famous fry since 1957. Thank you. Or is he, <laughs> <laughs> he could Where not have fit another French fry onto that. Oh yeah, sure. Help me. We'll grab one at least. This is gulls are coming in. Like Jenga. And just like that, we were headed south out of Kenora. I tend to set goals for myself on these trips, and in this case it was to swim with shallow water lake trout. As the stunning fall colors showed, we had tried our best to time this trip when lake trout come shallow onto rocky shoals to spawn. The drive down Cameron Lake Road was absolutely stunning and I realized how fortunate we were to be able to do what we were doing. Scott, you made the trip in once. Yeah. Was it what you was? How long did it take you? About 35 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not About bad. That. No, not that bad. It's a beautiful ride in. The boys are getting camp set up. The boys are getting camp set up. There should be a fire going. Everything should be set up by the time we get there. See any grouse? We saw like 25. <laughs> really? Grouse. Well, we made it to not not quite the shores. Isinglass is probably like another 400 yards there, but uh, the boys set up camp ready. Sam. Is warming up then, by the fire. Look at the chair these guys brought. <laughs> That's a little excessive. Wow. Found a beautiful camping spot back here. We saw so many grouse on the way here. So many grouse. But uh, yeah, we're gonna enjoy a beautiful night by the fire. What's, what's for dinner tonight, Sam? Uh, we're gonna do some steaks, some baked potatoes, and some veggies. Life is good. Welcome to Sam's kitchen. Oh my goodness, Sam. What? Kitchen. Look at this. Oh, a little, a little red wine to go with that <laughs> little Wayne Gretzky. You got your veggies, you got your potatoes. 
You got your steak. You got your green adventures. <laughs> I like that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We made it through the night. We got a happy and healthy crew over here. What are you thinking about this weather today, Scott? Oh, I love the no wind, Jay. No wind, look at this. Just smoke going straight up and that is gonna be much nicer because it's gonna be cold when we get out of the water after diving, but uh, we, uh, we're not in really a rush right now. We're, uh, we got Sam crushing the cooking duties again. What's for breakfast today, Sam? Eggs, bacon, and toast. Wow, look at this girl. I would say she'd make a great wife, but she already does, so she's off the market. Show you our little camping setup here. I love this tent. We got two cots inside of here. It's so quick to set up. One cot for me, one cot for Sam, and a lot of room, but it's just nice being off the ground. And I don't know, I've just had bad luck with inflatable air mattresses. So using a cot is uh, it's definitely easier and quicker. Maybe, maybe a little bit heavier, but you never have to worry about a pump and uh, never have to worry about getting wet on the near the ground. The end of this trail is where Isaac Last Lake is. So we're going to eat some breakfast, make a game plan. We made kind of a dive plan the other day, but we'll probably go over it as a crew. And then we got a lot of scuba gear to fit in there. And we'll get as close as we can, and then we're going to uh, assemble the raft. Today's dive day. We've made it to Isinglass. This water is, yeah, it's clear. It is very, very clear. Is it the clearest water I've ever seen? I'm not sure. I'm looking forward to getting under underwater and seeing what we can see. It's gonna be a bit of work yet. Yeah, we still have to assemble the raft, but wow, this is great. Quite the ordeal bringing this all in. We got two tanks per person. Should give us about two hours of diving. Hour and a half maybe. We got the crew that made it all happen. I'm very strong. You're gonna want me paddling. I go very fast. You capturing this, Sam? We're off. The key is to be a photographer that you don't have to paddle. The crew had assembled the raft that Scotty had dreamt up and we had made it to eyes and glass. Satellite images I had looked at countless times before the trip did not do justice to the mesmerizing blue hue of the water. What a breathtaking location and we had it all to ourselves. Well, uh, <laughs> the water is pretty turquoise. The raft is working, the sun is shining, life is good. We're headed to that island out there, we're gonna drop some gear and then I think that'll be our second dive spot. Yeah, might I can't wait to pee in my suit. I don't know if that's frowned upon or not in scuba diving, but. All right, we are looking for some trout. That is the goal. Wish us luck. Good luck. Water's like tropical underwater, it's just phenomenal. That was cool, that was very cool. Definitely the clearest water I've ever dove in, divin, 
went scuba diving in. Well, spot number one was absolutely incredible. We didn't see any fish, but that's okay. Uh, we knew that it was kind of, you know, I, typically with lake trout, they can stack up on a few key spots and not ever being on this lake before. It's kind of, you know, you're taking a chance on where the trout may be spawning, but we have enough air to dive one more spot. And we were diving another one of the islands of the lake. And yeah, maybe get lucky, maybe not, but it's just stunning. We cannot have asked for a better day. What just we, happened? We saw some trout. We saw some trout as we were paddling along the shore. Uh, it's just amazing how clear it is. Like I, I don't even have polarized shades on and I stood up and I think we saw two or three. So this is like the right cobbly sort of shoreline. Um, we're still not at our next destination, but we still got a little air left in our tank. So this might be it. Well, we went down to 60 feet. That's the deepest I think I've gone in fresh water. And still, the, the visibility was just absolutely incredible. We could have gone to probably like 80 feet or 100 feet and still seen no trout, but that is all right. Doesn't well, look like your lips are working right. I'm so chilled right now. <laughs> oh, I'm cold. Come hug me, Scotty. Welcome back to part two of our adventure. I did not want to settle with the feet. And part one was not, was, we, we, didn't, we didn't get defeated, we just didn't get any lake trout footage, which for me personally was a, a big goal, a big objective, but we saw eyes and glass, we made it in, we made it out, we dove it, which was absolutely stunning. Some of the clearest fresh water that I've ever seen, but we did not see any trout underwater. Anyways, we're a couple weeks later, the water should be a lot colder, and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the lake trout are spawning, which means they will have moved up shallow and we can swim with them. Because I think the potential for the footage will be something that has very rarely ever been captured. So enough talking. Here we go. Wait. Are we saying the lake name or no? Sure, Gordon Lake. Gordon Lake. Now Gordon Lake, know. easy to get to, good trout. Not big trout though. Mm, well, we'll see, there's some females. We saw lots of males before. So You've, you've done this before? Yes. Yeah. Second time? Second time, yeah. Nice. All right, we're rolling out. Game plan, Captain. Game plan is get uh, ready here. Then we're gonna drive out to the island, which is on the other side of the lake. Uh, nice and warm will still be. And then uh, jump in the lake. We gotta go swimming. Yeah. We're gonna use live scope today, guys, right here. We're gonna use live scope so we can actually see the trout before we jump in. I don't wanna waste any time in this cold water. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped. We should be able to see in front of the boat, see where those trout are stacked up before we jump in this frigid water. We're looking for low 50 degrees. And right now it is saying, Phew. 46 degrees. The other one says 44. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. Just got nasty out here. We uh, we found one spot with some trout. Uh, I wanted to film a little bit more and try to find another spot, but I think we're just gonna go back to spot number one. We saw some fish on live scope in like 10 to 20 feet of water. So we're just gonna cross our fingers because once we hop in the water, we're not switching locations. And uh, we're gonna go hide behind the island and anchor up and suit up. While it was a blizzard above the water, once we went beneath the waves, everything was calm and quiet. We'd entered right into the spawning grounds of hundreds of trout. Our mission was complete. It was such a cool glimpse into their underwater world and to be able to swim alongside these magnificent fish.
Trips like these constantly remind me of how incredibly blessed I am to call this place home. As well, I think it's our duty to protect these unbelievable locations and leave them just as we found them. <laughs>